Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I am not where I normally am. I'm actually at my parents' house right now. Emily and I are in the middle of a move uh, and we're trying to get everything out of our house and it's hectic and crazy and my house is just not recordable in right now. Uh, and so my parents were like, why don't you record here? And I said, okay, why not? And so now you guys get this awesome picture of me as a baby. Anyway, the real reason that I needed to talk to you today was that I have seen in the next week or so on GameFound a really big, are they called GameFounds there? Like Kickstarter, Kickstarters? No. Project is going to happen and it is called Wild Ascent by Lazy Squire Games. This game, this game, the more I look at it, the more I get excited. It has dinosaurs. It has beautiful miniatures. It has skirmish modes. It has a campaign mode. It has all of these different solo mode. It has all these things that I really want in a game. And as much as you guys, if you've seen our top 20 video, know that I really enjoy games like Heroescape and Bloodstone and all of those fun skirmish style games. This just seems right up my alley. The only problem is that it's expensive. And so is moving. And so I'm trying my best to sell off a bunch of the things that I have, making it easier for me to, you know, get out of the house, but I'll hopefully be making a little bit of cash so that I can put it towards Wild Ascent when it comes into GameFound and my wife doesn't get mad because we should have spent it on the house. <laughs> but this time I wanna play a game. So before each of these, I'm going to ask you if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to get rid of it. And I will say that I am a very motivated person to get rid of the games right now. But if you saw my previous video, you've noticed that out of, I think my collection is up to 98 games, I only got rid of like five or six. I have a hard time saying goodbye. So couple that with my love for Wild Descent and all of their kick game founder goodness that is on their page. Take all of that into consideration. And for this first game, let's go. For our very first game, I'm going to pull out one that is actually kind of old, but it is a really great game. Let's see what you guys think about Betrayal at House on the Hill. This game is a very fun, cooperative kind of game where eventually you guys will stop working together and one player will try to eliminate all the other players through some craziness of becoming a monster that randomly happens based on things that happen around the game board and it's really really fun and I played this a lot in college which for those of you that don't know was at least five years ago that was my senior year so it's been a while since I've really had a really fun game night with this game now that's not the last time I played it I've played it a few other times but it didn't quite have the the pull I guess that it did when I was in college that being said might keep it because it's cheap so what do you think am I going to keep it or am I gonna call it? If you said call, you were right. I am getting rid of Betrayal at House on the Hill. As much as I love this game, again, I don't see myself playing it much anymore, especially because the different things that I love about this game, I, I, I can get from other games, especially the movement around the map and the the secretiveness of, of all of the tiles and all of that, it reminds me of H.H. Holmes, which I actually, my family loves playing. Uh, it Any of the cooperative, like, dudes on a map, this style game, I can get from Cthulhu Death Might Die, which Max has. And if I want to play a really good 1v everyone else game where there's eventually going to be a traitor among you, I'd rather play Dead of Winter or maybe even Last Night on Earth. I, there are just so many other games that I have that I think I would much rather bring to the table, even though it does all of those things I just said very well. So let's move on to number two. This next one is actually one I've had in my collection for quite some time as well, and it is Flashpoint. This is a cooperative game where you and your buddies become firefighters. It's ranked very high uh, on BGG, surprisingly so. Not that it's bad or anything like that. I just, I, I'm surprised by it. <laughs> uh, it is... It is cute. Uh, all of the players have different powers that really 
uh, strengthen the game, I think. It's very asymmetric in that sense where even though you have like similar base powers, you're going to want to lean into your special one. And, and the, the group really becomes uh, cohesive because the, you rely really heavily on the player powers that everybody else has. Uh, it is a game that I probably have lost more than I've won, if this helps give you any uh, uh, inkling as to what I'm going to do. And it is a game that I've owned for at least five years. Um, I got it because Will Wheaton uh, on Tabletop really, really recommended it. And I enjoyed it when I played it. And that's all I'm going to give you as a hint. So tell me, am I going to keep it or am I going to call it? If you said keep, you would be wrong actually i'm calling this game too uh this one probably hurts the most out of all of the ones i'm going to call but there's one big reason that i actually didn't say because i felt like it would give it away um that i'm going to call it and if you think i was being sneaky then maybe you're right um but my wife and i played this together during quarantine at least twice once be and it didn't go well and she didn't really enjoy it we lost really badly and she didn't really have fun but we gave it another shot just to see if it was an off you know, night or anything like that. She loves Pandemic, and I feel like if you love Pandemic, you might love this game. But for her, it was not true because on our second time, she actually li disliked it even more. Uh, and so we... I, I don't know. I, I figured if, if I'm going to have a bunch of cooperative games in my house, which I do, and my wife is not a huge cooperative fan, I might as well really... If it's, especially if she's the person I play the games with the most... And Max isn't even really that interested in it. And if you look at my board game stats, which I don't know how you could, but if you can't, I play like 95% of my games with those two. So if neither of them want to play it, why would I keep it around? I'm not going to play it by myself. It's There's no solo variant. Um, and I'd rather it go to somebody who is going to enjoy it. So that's two of these like 15 games. So let's keep going. Hopefully you're doing well, or if you're doing bad, I'm sorry. You can come back with these next few games. This next one is Dinner in Paris. Now, Dinner in Paris is a very, very fun game. If you watch me play it on this channel with Max, you know that I really enjoy this game. It's a very fun game with a lot of, I think if you love Ticket to Ride, Dinner in Paris is a game that you will love because there's very simple mechanics to the game that allow you to have a lot of strategy down the road. A lot of the strategy involved is in the thinking, not the choices that you have. The choices are very simple. Simple. You pick from cards available. You uh, play the cards you have to build restaurants, and you use the money that you earn from building restaurants to build terraces. And that's it. It, it, it just is that, and all of the strategy of the game comes from the way you build your restaurants, the way you build your terraces. And I'm a very big fan of games that have simple mechanics but high strategy. I think that if you can give a player only a certain number of choices for their turn and still make the game extremely strategic and fun, then you've nailed how to make a board game. Uh, that being said, my wife kind of liked it. Max kind of liked it. So what do you think? Am I going to keep it or am I going to call it? If you said keep, you are correct. I'm actually going to keep this game because of how much I like it. Uh, unlike the Fire Rescue Flashpoint game, I've played this one very recently and I'm really in love with it right now. I think the, the art is beautiful. The last time Emily and I played it, we played with... Uh, mood lighting and that tried to make it look like a night in Paris. We listened to French music and it was really fun and really thematic. And I love this game. I think that there's a lot more strategy in it than a lot of people give it credit for. And I think that if you haven't checked it out and you like games like Ticket to Ride or other games like that, you should absolutely check out this game. So that's Dinner in Paris. We've done three. We've got to go a little bit faster. So speed round. We're going to go with a few smaller games. Welcome to the Dungeon. This game is a game I've had for a while. I really like yellow games, like the crypto. That being said, I've not played it in at least a year and a half. Now, granted, it's been the coronavirus, so a lot of games I've not been able to play in a year and a half. But this game is a game that's sit on my shelf for a while, and every time I see it, I'm not really drawn in to playing it. 
I did like the few games that I've played with it. <laughs> I know I might be sounding like contradictive, but I'm trying not to give you too many hints before I say whether I'm going to keep it or call it. So what do you think? Keep or call? If you said call, you are correct. I'm getting rid of this game. Uh, that one was probably a little bit easier because I gave you a lot of hints. I don't see myself really playing this game much anymore. I think that a lot of other games I have that are luck based or press your luck based. Sorry, actually, that's what I should have said. Uh, I like more uh, and I would rather play. So we're gonna we're gonna call that one. I, d I doubt I'm gonna get very much money for it, but I might even just give it away to somebody who I think will play it more. Uh, because I hate watching games just sit on my shelf when I know that somebody could be having fun with them. All right, this is the Funko Verse strategy game. Now, technically, I think a um, a add-on or expansion to the base game, but uh, this in this one you play as Catwoman and Robin, I believe. Yes, and in these you it's a simply a simple skirmish game if you've ever played unmatched or something similar to that it reminds me of that uh it might be a little more simpler than that uh for sure uh and you guys know my love for skirmish games so what do you think keep or call i'm actually calling this one and i realize now that i've done four games call one game keep so maybe you can lean one way or the other and it'd be a little bit easier for you but there's one reason I'm getting rid of this game, even though I really enjoyed my time with it, is that I actually have a bunch more. I have the Harry Potter uh, base game, and I have one of the Harry Potter expansions, and I did have a Rick and Morty one, but I'm getting rid of that as well. It's one of those things where I, I would rather just have one universe of the Funkoverse, which I know that doesn't really make sense. I want one section of the Funkoverse universe in my collection which is the harry potter ones i'm going to keep that as my harry potter skirmish game and it's fun it's a great game if you if you are into skirmish games at all i would highly recommend giving it a try especially considering that it's easier to play than some of those heavier ones so if you have somebody who's just not really into them that that might be the game for you all right moving on we're going to go to citadels citadels is a game for uh how many players does it play at Oh, it's two to eight. I did not realize that the player count actually went that high. I've only played it at two, and I really enjoyed this game. It's a it's a simple game about um, I and I I would say that I enjoyed my plays with this. I've only played it twice. Uh, this game is about getting gold, constructing uh, buildings. Your whole goal in the game is to become a master builder. Uh, over all of the other players you're playing with, which, again, I've only played two, and it's a really fun card game. I would say that, um, I don't know how old it is, but I do think that it has been around a while. Um, so what do you think? That's all I'm going to give you. Keep or call? I'm actually keeping this one. I enjoyed it so much, I honestly thought I was going to get rid of it. I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork, even though it is really pretty on the front. Uh, I just it didn't draw me in as much, especially the, the I'm, I've, a lot of card games I don't keep around very long. Um, but this one I, I'm in, impressed by, and I'm excited to play with Max. I think that he would actually really enjoy this game. Um, the theme alone is really neat, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it with him and see if he likes it too. You're on the chopping block, buddy. You better not fail me this next time we play. All right. We have a few games left. One of which is Marvel Villainous. Now, what do you think? You know I love Villainous. You know it's my number 11 game of all time as of March, this April, April this year. Um, if I like it that much, the base game, this is a Marvel version that does not mix because they are a little bit different. What do you think I'm going to do with it? I'm actually going to keep it. I know I've done, man, a lot of keeps in a row. But this game is so fun. I honestly thought I'd be getting rid of it. I got it as a gift. I thought, I don't know if I need more Villainous if I can't combine them with the other Villainous games. Why would I want this? And I, I almost would be more drawn to it if it were named something else. But they absolutely should have kept it 
named Villainous because it is the exact same game. The way the players interact is just a little bit different, and that's why you can't combine them, really. Um, but it is so fun. I'm more than excited for when the other expansions came out. And I played it at four players, guys. Most of the time, Villainous games are agonizing if it's more than two to three players but this this was fun at four i enjoyed it a lot if you are a fan of villainous at all i highly recommend trying marvel villainous all right we have one two three four five six five five games left one two three four five i can't count all right the next game that i'm going to pull out is sinister six now this game is Kind of a heist game kind of a little bit of just playing villainous uh and you and your buddies are playing as spider-man villains and you're trying to complete a set of heists while also maybe trying to i guess betray them because you're a villain uh the whole idea is that you have plenty of opportunity to basically go behind your other friends back and let them take the fall while you sneak away with all of the money um and it's Fun. I enjoy this a lot. I, I think that the artwork is really neat the way they've chosen it And I also love spider-man. So what do you think? Sinister six keep your call. I Am actually calling this game I'm getting rid of it and the biggest reason is because of the Marvel villainous game If I want to play as Marvel villains, I don't need two different games for that. I I I look and I compare the two and maybe I can give you a better video of that in and of itself but I just don't think Sinister Six is as good as Marvel Villainous. It's just tough. I, I would rather just keep one and Marvel Villainous is absolutely going to make it to the table before Sinister Six does. So that is on my call list. Next up is Seven Wonders. Now this game I have owned for a while and I've played a total of four times. I've enjoyed it when I've played it every once in a while. Sometimes I do not enjoy playing this game. Uh, it is a classic and it is highly ranked and people love it. And to be fair, I think it's a very approachable game as well. So what do you think? Keep your call. This is going to be a call. I, I don't know what the hype is around this game actually i i want to like it i love the theme i just don't i i've tried it a bunch of times and it's just not a game for me i i've 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 played it at high player counts i've played it at low player counts and as much as i like drafting cards this game is it's just meh to me I, I would rather play a lot of other games um if i want a simple card drafting game i'm gonna go with uh sushi go or i'm gonna go with uh star realms if i really want a heavier uh, and this isn't even really heavier card drafting game i'm gonna pick clank i'd rather play those games than this and they're gonna see their way to the table more and if i want to play with seven players i'm not gonna pull out seven wonders are you kidding me no so this game's gonna get I'm gonna get rid of it as much as I think that I and I and I respect the opinions of others and if you don't like my opinion then maybe you could respect mine I just don't see the hype around it I'm not a huge fan uh, maybe you guys can explain it to me in the comments we'll see but that is going on my call list I have three games left the first of which is gonna be Kingdom Rush. Now this game was given to me as a gift by Max, who was awesome enough to grab me the copy of it. Now this game has cool miniatures, which you know that I like. This game is a tower defense game, which you guys know that I also enjoy. And it's also a polyom poly polynomial game. Sorry. Um, and I like all of those that I've played pretty much. So, and it's a Lucky Duck game, which I like those as well. I've only played it once and I played it by myself and I don't even know if you're allowed to. Whenever I'm not allowed to, I will just play with two players, especially if it's co-op and I'll just play as both. I think that's fine. I don't see a problem with it. Um, but I did that and that's all I'm gonna give you as a hint. What do you think? Keep her call. If you said call, you would be wrong. 
I actually really like this game. I'm excited to play it more. It was on my possible call list, but literally just because I think I could get a decent amount of money for it. Um, that I, in the moment that I said that, I, I don't even think that it really was being considered much. I just wanted to give you guys one that you might have guessed hits all and checks all the boxes for me. I think that this game is super fun and I'm excited to finally get to play it and bring it to the table with a group of people rather than just myself because that is 100% how I prefer to play games. So I have two left, one of which is a game that you'll recognize from a list of most thematic games that I've played uh, and it is Mice and Mystics. This game, I took on vacation with me and I had a blast playing by myself. I did not, however, convince my family to play it with me and I think that it was just a little daunting. Um, as far as I can tell, Max is not as excited to play this as much as he is about other games and I get it. I'm having a hard time finding the group uh, to play this with. And that's all I'm going to give you because there's only two left. So let's wait and see. Keep or call. I'm keeping this one. There is absolutely no chance. I am getting rid of this game maybe ever. I will dare say if we made the top 20 list today, it would be in my top 10, if not my top five games of all time. Look at how cute this is. It's ridiculous. How in the world can you pass that up? And on the back... Well, no, not on the back. <laughs> in the game itself, everything is just so cute and thematic and fun to play with. The story is incredible. I love how cute it is. And I think that it, uh, if I could convince them to keep making this game, I would. And I know that they only have, I think, two expansions, one of which is a standalone and gives you way more content beyond these with new characters and all of that stuff and I'm excited to eventually get that too. I really think this game doesn't get as much love as it deserves. And maybe it did when it first came out because it's like a 10 year old game now, but I really think it still needs to be on the hearts and minds of people who love this game, who might have not have been in the hobby that long. It is so awesome. It is a dungeon crawler with a great campaign and it, it's approachable in theme, like to where I think you've convinced anyone to play this game and I, I, i've not really tried more than like once or twice it was on vacation to get my family to play this i think if we dedicated a night to it they would fall in love with it just like i did but this is mice and mystics and then we have one game left so for the last game i have it's kind of a game kind of not and it is Magic the Gathering. Ugh. I have more. I just left them at home. <laughs> uh, I figured three would, would prove my point. I used to be really big into this game. Uh, I loved making decks. My very first deck was a uh, blue, full blue deck. And it was literally based around the Planeswalker that I pulled, which was Jace. And uh, I was literally, it was a deck built around making you lose cards and losing your deck really, really quickly. And uh, I had fun playing as that because while it wasn't the best deck, if I ever won, I drove people insane. And that was fun. I liked I liked the thrill of playing cards that not very many people, like it's, it's a strategy that was neat. Uh, I made tons of decks after that. I made a white blue deck where it was all based around putting tokens out and then buffing them and then just overwhelming you with my number of tokens that I have. And then my last deck that I used that before I finally just gave up uh, because I felt like I had done it all was a multicolored deck where it was literally every single color. And I had the Door to Nothingness card, which is literally a card where if you have every kind of land and a creature of every color and you tap them all, then boom, you win the game. And that was it. Uh, it, it was difficult to do. And I only ever did it in a multiplayer game where there was like five of us and everybody knew, well, Josh's deck is really, really weird. And then I pulled that card out and I won. And <laughs> anyway, so this is Magic the Gathering. That was all about five years ago. And I've saved the cards and I've not played them since. So what do you think I'm doing with it? Keep or call? 
it is time to say goodbye to Magic the Gathering. I am cooling this. I'm going to try to sell it as best I can. This is a game that is very fun. If you are huge into this game and you're like, why is he getting rid of it all? I understand. I, I loved this game. It was like the only game I played for like a year. But what I do know is I'm going to want all of the new stuff. And I would rather have a bunch of other board games than fall into that money pit again. Um, that being said, very fond memories of this game. And I will miss it. Uh, and that is my board game call or keep uh and i'm excited to get to move i'm excited to get a new board game room i'm excited to get all of those things and hopefully with all of this and a couple of other like cool nerdy things that i'm going to sell i will be able to back wild ascent and uh i am so excited for that game please check out the game found in like seven days i really think this game is going to hit a lot of people's boxes in terms of what they want in a game that is a skirmish game and a campaign game all wrapped in one the miniatures look fantastic i think it's going to be awesome and a blast uh check out our channel for more stuff if you like this video please please do us a favor and subscribe and like this video and even comment it really does help we would really really appreciate all of the support that you can give us i hope you guys have a great rest of your week and you enjoy and get out and play some games with your friends or stay home and play with your families if you can't. Uh, we love you. See you guys next time.